Your next fight brings you out of the corner, out of a matrix MMA from Greensboro, North Carolina, out of the 145 pound weight class. Please all welcome Drew Pia. So I spoke to one of his teammates earlier, says he's an unstoppable, does not get tired. Oh my goodness. What? What a walkout. What showmanship. He is ready to go. Tried to blast through LC there. Yeah. He's ready to get in there. He's not interested in any of anything else. That was Jonathan Freeman there and is walking him out, wasn't it? Yep, title challenger later tonight in the main event. Two fights away. Look, Drew. Drew Pius is like, just let me in there. Like, like he, he's tried to walk in there several times. I'm gonna guess that's his brother over there. <laughs> Whose fight his, fell through earlier. His brother's got wild hair. Well, when it's, it's not when it's not braided up yeah. for a fight, it's just cr all I'm, over the place. I'm guessing that the guy with braided hair who looks just like him is his brother. He hit the meanest forward roll of all time just then. Yeah. And his opponent fighting out of the corner out of Carolina Combat in your trail, North Carolina. Please all welcome Fred Morris. Jacob Pais sat in there on the outside. Pantomime is what Drew is supposed to do. Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo, I got a lot of shit to say, so I'ma do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave. Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay. Cause my messages are kinda so they put them on display. Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty. I have a sense of urgency. A message for eternity, for everyone internally. I had some people burning me, but now they fucking learn to see. I ain't the one to fuck with. Now they looking nervously, and I don't really care what you think of me respectfully. You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better. See, I will outwork you, turn you to an enemy. Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need some therapy. Recipe. I've been cooking up hits, I'ma leave a legacy You'll be looking small when you're standing right next to me I'm 5'10", bitch, but I'm 10 feet Cause next I don't to give me. a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Cause I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Yeah, I'ma do it my way He says, I just feel like I could have done better. Wow. It's like, okay, okay, well, I'd like to see that. Makes me sick. <laughs> that, how, that first, level, of all, first of all, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> that level of humility humility makes me sick. A Nari roll attempt. Yeah. And manages to find that leg. Interesting choice. That's not, uh, it's not a strategy I would readily employ against a Carolina combat sports guy. Yeah. Because he probably gets away with good. that by everybody else. But Fred Morris ends up too high, slips oh, off, and now, now he's on a nice little guillotine, guillotine. It's here. in there, man. It's in there. But Fred Morris looks I calm. Think Fred's doing the right reaction, which is to fight the hands. He's really. So Drew's actually doing a good job too of keeping the chin buried. Too many guys when they get here, they get they start rushing and they start trying to uh, like pull their chin away from the body. But he's actually doing a good job of staying in tight. But Fred is out. Popped out. He stayed calm. Popped out. And now commences the ground and pound. And Drew motions for him. Come on. Striking from bottom. That makes sense. That tracks with the rest of his, his yeah thing. with the whole yeah. with the whole image. On brand, I would say. Drew thinks about standing up. Fred, and then scoots 
and then makes it his way to his feet. Left overhand lands for, for Drew, and now he's in on a single leg. Drew pies all action so far. Yeah, just, he is. Just foot on gas. And he doesn't seem like the type of guy that lets go of takedown attempts either. No, he's a dog on this one so yeah, far. Yeah, like Fred, he's gonna hang on to this for the next minute and 30 seconds. Fred's trying to get an angle through which he can sprawl, but his the, back being against the fence is making that impossible. And then Drew finds it, rolls over, and spins to side control, top look, side control. Display of athleticism right here. Yeah, and then, but look, Fred is pummels and gets back to his feet, wrestles back to his feet. Yeah, I mean, this is not a, uh, you know, all due respect to Derek Brunson and UBG, this is not a UBG level opponent. This is a real guy. Yeah. So you're not going to just buzzsaw through him. You're going to have to figure this out. You're going to have to work through these positions for real. The first attack you throw is often not going to work on a guy like this. You're going to have to chain your attacks together. And now Morris is looking to link his hands on a Kimura. Looping a shot in from around the way. 45 seconds left in the opener here. What a crazy round, man. Crazy round. Lots of movement here. But this is... Drew's best look so far. This is his best look. He, he needs to cut to the outside and flatten him against the fence. Cutting to the inside makes it easy for him to turtle. Fred Morris is going to get back to his feet here. I have zero doubt about that. Peels away the hands. Loops in, punches, and looks for that front headlock. And now he's got a tight guillotine now of his own Fred standing. Morris is on a guillotine. That's pretty tight, man. Pius defending by throwing the arm over the shoulder. And then Fred wow. Morris pushes with very his head. Nice. Very, sprawls very nice. Sprawls out and flattens him. But I have a feeling Drew doesn't care. I have a feeling that his mentality of in that position is like it's whatever. Mm -hmm. He's just trying stuff. Mm -hmm. He started with an Iminari roll. An ill-advised, ill-timed Iminari roll that went nowhere, and it still didn't cost him. No, no, he just kept throwing cycling attacks over yeah. and over and over again. And Fred Morris stayed cool as a cucumber when he was caught in a very tight guillotine. He fought the hands, pulled them away, and I was staring right into his face, and he was just calm. He was like catatonic, just breathing, waiting, waiting for Drew to decide to let go of that thing or for his head to pop out. Drew's brother, Jacob, tell him to take him down and take his back. He's like, bro, I'm trying. <laughs> did you watch the round? Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was doing my best. I really did try that. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, in, in, so far, I think this is the toughest fight Drew's had in his career. Uh, he's going to have to get a little creative to, to force the positions that he's had so much success from in the past. Fred Morris is going to have to not get rigmarole. Not get a uh, hullabalooed or rigmaroled by all the extracurricular activities and the and the unorthodox style of Drew Pius. Again, looking at that guillotine. He's really giving oh, his oh. neck there. He's really yeah, he's he's putting his head in there. Maybe as bait, maybe as just a matter of style. But if if Fred, he's tempting Fred to try this guillotine at good a good fall. snap down. Drew's in a lot of trouble. He's got his arm deep across Drew's neck. Drew's going to roll out, but he's going to give up the position. Oh, and then back. Decides, to, decides not to go to his back. Fred is not rushing. This is how you not rush the front headlock guillotine. He got the wrong leg. Yeah, he, he ran out of mat. Uh, yeah. that, he was looking for the sweep there yeah. and, and just ran out of mat and cage wall. Slams him on the safe side there. And Brian Battle loves that. Yeah, you can now see. it's like a re it's like a reversal of the first uh, of the first round here with with Pies now looking at a Kimura. And and Fred Morris holding onto his own shorts. You can you're allowed to hold onto your own shorts. You can't hold your opponent's shorts. Pies he's forced three. to let go because those body shots were just adding up. Oh my gosh, burying burying those hammer fists into the body. Lots of time to work here too. And you know, Pi's a little content to play knee shield here. You can't really do that with your back against the fence because part of the defensive element of knee shield in MMA is being able to retract your body and, and, and scoot yourself away while pushing them with your legs. So if your, if your head's against the fence, your back's against the fence, 
the knee shield's just not a great. Uh, now we see him trying to go under in deep half. Now that's a much more sound strategy, but once again, you carry him over, what's there? The wall. So you're not going to be able to get a full sweep. Yeah, that wall playing havoc on Drew's attempt. And you to know, get that's up. that's what this team, this CCS team, they are good on the wall. That's their that's one of their big attributes. I, I think that they're just very aware of the wall at all times. And he is he has been cranking that headlock in that guillotine. Yeah, Drew is struggling here. And you know, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to see these guys, these Pies brothers, against people from real gyms that have had more than one fight because it's different than being in there with a guy who works at Best Buy 50 hours a week. Yeah. Drew now working on getting back to his feet. He's deep on that chin strap too. And now that that now Pi is able to stand up and break the uh, and then scores a oh. takedown of his own, but lands. Oh man. I know Drew wishes he had 30 more seconds of that round. Quite a fight. What a matchup, too. We saw, a rev like you said, uh, the exact same scenario, but the roles reversed, which means that these two guys are very well matched. Brian Battle loved that big takedown. And think about the amount of time that Drew spent over there on bottom in Morris's corner. Absorbing shots. And having to listen yeah. to a guy talk his opponent through beating him. The it's ultimate fighter, the not ultimate, just a guy. Yeah, yeah the ultimate the fighter. The ultimate fighter. So you're on bottom getting hit with the ultimate fighter screaming at the other guy on how he can hit you harder and better. And there is that's a real huge advantage, actually, being in your own corner, being able to hear your own coaches, mm -hmm. and you know that your opponent can't hear his. Round three. Tough fight so far. Competitive yes. fight between these two guys. Drew arguably down two rounds. He's tried to implement the grappling and the jujitsu in various ways, but Fred's just been one little step ahead of him for most of this fight. You see him kind of coming in now, head well, down. Yeah, he's looking at the floor, swinging wild. Swinging wild. I think he's a little, a little bit of desperation there. I think early on, what he was doing was more about that was his style. I think now he's a little desperate. Fred Morris just pushed off of the cage to throw a knee. That was pretty sweet. He put his foot on the cage and then threw the knee yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah, kind of like Pettis yeah. <laughs> style. Step knee. Now Drew's going to, oh my goodness. Yeah, Drew's I, got his hands laying behind the leg and Fred is trying for that Kimura. Drew doesn't have a lot of uh, regard for his head safety. No, and you know what? That's not really been the issue. Like he's put himself, now look, he's on top and side control. He's done some risky, crazy things that run counter to typical wisdom, but look where he is now. Look where it's gotten him. On top with pretty good position. Two minutes to go, too. I mean, he, he I think he needs to make something happen here in this round. So. He's pulling the post of Fred Morris away as he walks into the cage. Yikes. People behind us damaging their vocal cords. Yeah. Now Drew has one leg and good head position, but Morris is making a good attempt to wall walk up, to, yeah. To mm -hmm. get, to improve his position a little bit. He's been patient and he's been technical throughout. But it was not the risk taking of Drew Pius that got him into those situations. That wasn't the, like, even the initial MNR role would seem, there we go. Nice hip bump sweep there from Morris. Patience and technical fighting. Yeah, you, when your weight is really far forward like that, you're, you're kind of asking to be swept. What what was that? Oh, that, that was the minute clacker. There's a minute clacker? I, I guess there is now. Drew throwing some punches. What? There's like a minute left. Oh, wow. That was, that was horrid. Yeah. Yeah. There was still a minute left on the clock. Those were three minute rounds, but they stopped it after two. North Carolina Mission Commission at it again. Yeah, that's 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 unfortunate to have an entire minute left in the fight. 
No fault of the fighters. No fault of the ref. Definitely not our fault. No, no. Certainly not Jason's fault. Jason had the right timer. Yeah. But if I know the commission, the referee's decision in the cage will stand. But whoever loses this fight is going to have to Something. think about it for, forever. The rest of their lives are going to think about that. I can just see Zig is so done with the commission. He's done. He had that loss from Ali earlier, and now this, this uh, snafu. Well, I, I think... They might be a. They might be fine. End up fine with it because. Well, yeah, yeah he's probably he ahead. He was winning the fight, and he was ahead at the time of the yeah. round being over. So yeah, I don't. But I don't think it's a, that big of a deal. But it's just another mark of unprofessionalism against the commission. But here's the thing: is Drew Pius was maybe down and was maybe losing, but I could definitely argue. I could see him getting a he sub. He could in a win. Yeah, 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 yeah. He could get a submission. A in guy a like Drew only needs a minute. You could, yeah. you could beat him up. I mean, that first m and roll could have gone very differently. You could beat him up for eight minutes straight, and he just needs one more minute, and yeah. he'll be, he can win a fight like that. I agree. A guy like him. There are fighters that that's not true for. There are fights where it's definitely not going to improve. Drew will always be able to make the argument that, like, I could have done a lot in that minute. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Who drew that? One of my students. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> drew is still ready. I think he kind of thinks that they're going to fight again. Fight some more. <laughs> They'll just fight again. We'll start over from the beginning. I think that's just how he is. He's like the chicken from Surf's Up. Does this mean <laughs> I get to fight some more? He just wants to fight. Judge's decision is in. Oh, and I know. And we have a split decision. That's so bizarre. With your winner going to the red corner, Drew Pius. Wow. Controversial to say the least. Controversial to say the least. Yeah, that was not good. That was not good. Yeah. That was gifted. That was gifted. He spent two rounds on the bottom getting smashed out. And, while, I mean, I, I, it goes back to that majority thing, right? Like, who's the judge in here who's seen that and, and thinks that this is like, you know, re roles reversed? Wow. Yeah, that's bad. 